So he's driving home from a friend's house. Okay, he drives 10 miles from a friend's house on the motorway, 240 miles on the motorway, 5 miles from the motorway. She takes 20 minutes to drive from a friend's to the motorway, drives at average speed of 60 miles per hour on the motorway, takes 25 minutes to drive from the motorway to her house, and she stops for 30 minutes as well. Uh, she leaves her friend's house at 9 a.m. What time does she get home? Right, so, so, so there's a lot of words here, but it's just asking about the time. So we know she starts at 9 o'clock. Okay, so she goes from a friend's house to the motorway, which is 20 minutes, which is nice. So I know I have to add 20 minutes onto that. So now she's on the motorway. Okay, now the motorway doesn't give us the time, but it has got a speed and it gives us the distance. So I need to do the speed equals distance over time. Okay. Some of you might use it as a triangle, triangle speed time. Just remember we've got distance on the top. Um, I'm working out the time, so I'm going to do this algebraically, times by times, times by time. Speed time equals distance, uh, divided by speed, divided by speed. Time equals distance over speed. Okay. Uh, my distance is going to be 240 miles. My speed is 60 miles per hour. I just want to check out those miles, and those are miles because sometimes I'm giving you different units. I use my calculator to do this. 40 divided by 16 equals 4. So this 4 is, we'll think about what your unit is in. So let's just check my unit here with 60 miles per hour. So that's in hours. So it's actually going to be hours. So I'm going to have to add 4 hours. 9 plus 4 equals, 9 plus 4 equals 13. So it's 13, 20. Okay. So now she's left the motorway. takes 25 minutes so I've got to add another 25 minutes to make her home which makes that 13.45 she's home however there is a 30 minute break here okay we don't know when that is but I'm just going to add it on to the end so let's add, add 30 minutes for the break that's where it can get a bit confusing because if I do 30 to 45 I get well let's do it 30 plus 45 equals 75 so 1375 is not a time in the real world because this only goes up to 60. So if, if I do that 60, I'll make that 14, 15. Okay. So that's the time it's going to go on. Uh, make sure it doesn't say PM or AM. So the answer is uh, 1425 or 215 PM. Now, again, your calculator can help you out. You have got a button here. It's uh, used for degrees, but you can use it to add time. So I'm actually going to focus on uh, this bit here. Okay. So let's start to do 13, uh, 45, 0, 0, because I have to add the seconds. That's right then. 13, 45, 0, 0, put in. Okay. And I'll need to add 30 um, seconds, so 0, 0, uh, 30, 0, 0. It'll work out to 4.15 for you. So just remember this button here is good for calculating the time. A, B, C, D is a trapezium. A, B is 25. B, C is 24. C, D is 10. Angle A, B, C is 90 degrees. Calculate the size of C, D, A. So C, D, A is this one here. Now, I'll give you answer to three significant figures. You may think of this and maybe it's trapezium. You might think, oh, well, it's top plus bottom times height divided by two. It's your top, it's your bottom. But it's nothing to do with areas, to do with angles. Now, normally, if it's something to do with angles and you haven't got much given, it's going to either be trigonometry or it's going to be Pythagoras. Now, I want to split this up to make triangles. If I put a line here, I have a nice right angle triangle. And I know this is 24 centimetres. But don't think this side here is 25 because 25 is all of it. So this 25 is a whole length. So if I actually want this side of the triangle, okay, I have to do 25 minus 10, which actually makes it 15 centimetres. And I know this is going to be a right angle, because I made this a rectangle. So it's this one here I really want to look at. So let's label it up. This side's my opposite, this side's my hypotenuse, this side's my adjacent. Okay. I like to write down all my trick formulas. I don't know how you remember it, but I always remember it as uh, some old hag cracked all her teeth on 
apples. We want one that's got the opposite and the adjacent, which begins with tan. So it's tan of your angle equals your opposite over the adjacent. Uh, my opposite is 15 over 24. Okay. But because I need to find the angle, I need to do the tan minus 1 of 15 over 24. So shift, tan. I'm just going to write 15 over 24. If you wanted to, you can put that in brackets and find the actual decimal equivalent. Okay, so 32.0053. I've written too many digits here, which is this one here. I have to add my 90 as well, because it's actually asking for the whole thing. So I'm going to add 90 degrees to that. Okay, which is 112.005. Now it says to three significant figure. This is my first significant figure, that's my second, that's my third. This round down, the answer is 112 degrees. In the 2012 Paralympics, the total number of gold and silver medals run by Brazil was 25. The ratio of number of gold medals that Brazil won to the number of silver medals is 3 to 2. How many silver medals? This is just ratio of amount. So 3 to 2 is 5. Let's make sure we've got the right way around. Uh, gold to silver. Okay. Uh, we know it's 35. So you've got to think 5 times what is 35. I'm going to do the opposite way. So I'm going to do 35 divided by 5. 7. So I've got to times this by 7. So we'll times both of them by 7. 2 times 7 is 14. 3 times 7 is 21. How many silver medals is this one here? So the answer is 14. Janet lives in England. He does a search on the internet and sees the type of Camry sale in France and America. In France it costs 126 euros, in America it costs 165 dollars. Janet finds out the exchange rate. How much cheaper is the American than the f than in France? Camera in America than in France. Give your answer in pounds. Okay, so I need to convert everything in pounds. So I'm saying in France, it's 126 euros. One euro is 0 0.89. So to get this to pounds, we have to times this by 0 0.89. 126 times 0.89. 112.14 pounds. Now, if we do it in America, uh, it's 165.24. Now, it's given us the other way around. If we're doing pounds to dollars, we times it by 1.62, but we're not we're doing dollars to pounds, so we need to divide that by 1.62. So, 165.24 divided by 1.62. Equals 102. Now it says how much cheaper, so we need to subtract it. Uh, I've got a negative number because I typed in my calculator the wrong way, but the answer is 10.14 pounds. Group of 200 adults uh, were asked which type of magazines they read. Their replies are 82 Red Sports, 80 Red Garden, 84 Red Fashion, 36 Red Sports magazines, and Red Garden. 61 Red Sports Magazines and Red Fashion, 25 Red Garden Magazines and Red Fashion, 14 Red Sports Magazines and Red Garden Magazines and Red Fashion Magazines. Completely the Venn diagram to show this information. All right, it's not when it says 82 Red Sports Magazines, you've got to think 82 is that entire circle. So that includes Sports and Garden, includes all of them, and includes Sports and Fashion. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to work backwards. One it says 14 Red Sports Magazines and Red Garden magazines and fashion. That's going to go here. So when it says 25 Red Garden and Red Fashion, this 25 includes this 14. So that's really 25 minus 14. I'm doing my calculator for this. 25 minus 14. So that means 11 goes here. Okay, so that's done, that's done. 31 red sports magazines and fashion. So it's this one here. So that's 31. So it's 31 minus 14, which is 17. Of course, I've done it. 36 red sports and red gardens, which is this. So it's 36 minus 14, which is 22. Now, 84 red fashion magazines. So it's 84. I don't want to put that one there because that would be incorrect. 84 includes all these three. So I'm going to do 84 minus 11 minus 14 minus 17. Which means this is 42. 
80 red garden. So this 80 includes all of them. So it's 18 minus 22 minus 14 minus 11. Which means it's 33. And cross it off. 82 red supporter magazines. So it's 82. And I've got minus these three again. 20, 22 minus 14 minus 17. Which means this is 29. Okay. Now you might think that all of this is completed. But if you notice, I'll cross this bit out because this is incorrect. We have to fill out the back bit. Because this is a bit with somebody who reads none of these magazines. Now we know it's out of 200. So we'll do 200 minus every single one of these numbers. Okay. So it's going to be 200 minus 33 minus 22 minus 29 minus 17 minus 14 minus 11 minus 42. And outside should be 32. Okay. It's quite simple to forget this. So please remember to put the last one in. The next question. One of the adults is asked to be chosen at random. Find the probability this adult reads none of these magazine types. Well, because there's 200, we know it's going to be out of 200. None of these is 32, so it's going to be 32 out of 100. Now, it doesn't say put it in the simplest form. It doesn't say give it as a decimal, so we can leave it as that. But I'm going to use my calculator just to cancel it down, just to be posh. Does it for over 25. It's not asking you to do this, but just do it anyway. If you want it as a decimal, it's 0 0.16 or 16%. Any one of these answers is correct. It's not that you have to put them all down, just anyone will find. So let's look at the probability that you read exactly two types of magazine. So if you think of people who read exactly two types, it's this one, this one, and that one. Now you might think about the one in the middle. That's not exactly two types. Yeah, that'd be three types. If it said two types or more, we'd include it, but it doesn't, so we don't. So it's going to be 17 plus 11 plus 22. Okay, and it's 50. Again, it's 50 out of 200. Same rules apply. I, can have a can I don't need to cancel it down because the question doesn't ask me to, but if you want it to be posh, you can. 50 out of 200, which is quarter. Press S to D, and it tells me 0 0.25 or 25%. Again, any one of these answers is acceptable. A, B, C, D, E, F is a cross-section of a prism. A, B, C, F is a square. Is that? F, C, D, E is a trapezium. ED is 22, the height of the prism is 20, the length of the prism is 80, work out the volume of the prism. Okay, now the first thing that we need to do is to work out the, uh, we'll put the measurements in for the square. It's a square, so even though it looks like a rectangle, this has to be 12, that's got to be 12, and that's got to be 12. So normally uh, volume is cross-section times the depth. You might want to work out the whole volume of this uh, cuboid and then the whole volume of this uh, trapezoid prism. But I'm going to work out the whole cross-section and times it by 80. So uh, my square is just going to be 12 times 12. 12 times 12. So this is 144. Okay, centimetre squared because it's an area. Now, trapezium is your top plus your bottom times your height divided by 2. You need to remember that. Uh, I don't know the actual height because my height of my, everything is 20. But we know this little bit is 12. So if we do 20 minus 12, we'll get the height of the trapezium. Eight. So now I can do my sum of 12 plus 22 times by height divided by 2. Let's make this actually 22. 12 plus 22 equals times 8 equals divided by 2 equals. Uh, it's important to put equals because if I do 12 plus 22 times 8, it's going to do this little bit here first. You could just put it in brackets, you'll get the same answer. Uh, add them together, so plus 144, 280, so the whole thing is going to be 280 centimetres squared. Uh, cross section times depth, I need to times it by my depth, which is 80, which is 22400 centimetres squared. And that's it. Liquid A has a density of 0 0.7 grams per centimetre cubed. B has a density of 1.6 grams per centimetre cubed. 140 grams of liquid A and 128 grams of liquid B are mixed to make liquid C. Work out the density of liquid C. Now the first mistake people tend to do is they tend to add them together and then divide them by two. That's not the case because there's different amounts of both of these. So the easiest way is to try and work out the volume of liquid C. And we've got the weight of liquid C. Well the mass is really what I'm going to use. So I'm going to use the word mass. And then we divide it. 
Now people tend to forget the uh, formula for density. Okay, so we've got density. But it includes here in the unit of density, it's grams per centimetres cubed. Grams is grams, centimetres cubed is centimetres cubed. But grams is actually your mass, and centimetres cubed is your volume. So I never remember this, I just look at the unit which is grams per centimetres cubed. Now, there might be a question where it's giving you the uh, mass and the volume, so you might not have the unit, but look where you normally write your answer. So let's talk about A. Right, so A has a density of 0 0.7. And I know the, um, it's going to be, my mass is 140. So I need to work out my volume. Okay, to solve this, uh, you times both sides by centimetres cubed, times by centimetres cubed, 0 0.7 centimetres cubed. Remember, this is a unit, like the actual variable, not a unit, equals 140, divided by 0 0.7, divided by 0 0.7 which is my centimetres cubed equals 140 over 0 0.7. Remember centimetres cubed is my volume, should have really used that. Uh, 140 divided by 0 0.7 equals 200. Right, I'll do exactly the same for B. Okay, so B is 1.6 grams per centimetres cubed. I know the uh, mass is 120 grams over centimetres cubed, which is really your volume. Do the same thing, times by centimetres cubed, times by centimetres cubed, 1.6 centimetres cubed equals 128. Divide by 1.6, divide by 1.6, okay, which is centimetres cubed equals, I'll use my calculator, do 128 divided by 1.6, means I've got 80 centimetres cubed. So that's my two individual ones. Now I'm mixing them together, so I still need to write my density equals mass over volume. Density I don't know because that's what the question is asking me to find out. Um, my mass is going to be my two weights added together. So it's going to be my 140 plus 128. 140 plus 128. Okay. Which is 268. And uh, my volume is going to be these two added together. Which is 280. So I'll just type that into my calculator. 268 divided by 280. So my density of the whole liquid is actually going to be 0 0.957. Uh, I'm just going to leave it to three decimal places and let's do grams per centimetres cubed. My question seven. Cumulative frequency graph gives information about recorded speed of 100 cars travelling on the road. And it just goes on and just says draw a box plot of this. Okay, so if we look at this, our minimum so this is our frequency, these are actual values. So our minimum value is 40, our biggest value is up there at 90. Okay. So then we've got 100, we'd find 50, we'd go along to the line, and we'd go down to 62, which is about there, that's my median. Okay. Uh, now our quarter would be 25, so remember this is 30, so we'd be along there, be halfway along there, so go along to the line, go down, so that's about 52, which is here. This is my lower quarter. Yeah, or Q1, whichever way you want to do it. And my second one, as I said, the quarter is going to be uh, 25, so my high quarter is going to be 75. So 70 is there, so 75 is here, you go along to the line, go back down, about 72. And you draw your box top, draw your line, draw your line. This is your upper quarter tile, or Q3. That's your highest value, that's your lowest value. Peter has £20,000 to invest in a saving account for two years. He finds information about two savings account. He's got bonus saver, which is 4% for the first year, then one5 each year after, and fixed rate, which is just 2.5% each year. Peter wants to have as much money as possible at the end of two years. Which of these should he choose? So let's put the page up. Bonus saver and fixed rate. Now you can do compound interest with multipliers, but I like to just do it one year at a time. So year zero, which is original, he's got £20,000. Now for bonus saver, he gets 4% for the first year. Now you can work out 4% and then add it on, but I'm actually going to work out 104% of 20000 because 100 would be like the first year. So 104, I have a percent button, okay, which is uh, above my bracket there. 
okay, um, times 20, 1, 2, 3. So my first year is actually going to be 208,000. Sorry, 20,800. Then it's 1.5% for the next year. So I'm going to have to times this by 101.5% for my next year. So it's first year, that's my second year. So I get my answer. I'll times it by 101.5%. So I get two, one, 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 two, twenty-some thousand one hundred and two pounds. Now let's do the fixed rate. Fixed rate is two point five per year. So again, I start with twenty thousand. Now hundred and two point five percent. So I'm going to use my calculator again and put twenty one two three times one hundred and two point five. I'm using my percent button. I don't have to do any other calculation. So my first year is 2005.00. Now I'm going to times that again by 102.5. It's exactly the same, there's no changes. So 102.5% so is fraction. So 102.5. Now which one's bigger? It's going to be this one here. So I'm going to say bonus saver is better. And get the right person number in gives two one 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 two pounds after two years. Rachel walks to school. The distance to school is two point eight kilometers, correct to uh, zero point one kilometer. She walks at a speed of five kilometers per hour, correct to the nearest kilometer per hour. Calculate the upper bound in minutes for the time Rachel takes to walk to school. Now, if I've got 2.8, okay, I always like to write my upper bound and my lower bound of this. This is nearest to the 0 0.1. So it's 2.85 and 2.75 uh, kilometers, kilometers. And my speed of 5 kilometers per hour. My upper bound is to nearest kilometer, so it's 5.5 .5 kilometers. And my lower bound is 4.5 kilometers. So we need the time in minutes. Okay, okay, up and down for me in time for Rachel takes to school. So we need the speed equals distance over time. Let's just rearrange that by times it by time, times it by time. Speed time equals distance uh, divided by speed divided by speed. Time equals distance over speed. Okay, you can get exactly the same thing by using your triangle. So time equals distance over speed. Now, because there's four, people tend to get confused with this. Because you're on the upper bound, you might think it's the highest value divided by the highest value. It's not actually going to work. And just to play on the safe side, you really want to do all four combinations. So your upper bound divided by your upper bound, your upper bound divided by your lower bound, uh, your lower bound divided by your upper bound, and your lower bound divided by your lower bound. It just, just makes it a little bit easier, and you don't really have to think about what's going on. So let's say option one. I've got 2.85 divided by 5.5. Option two, I've got 2.85 divided by 4.5. Option three, I've got a lower bound, which is 2.75 divided by 5.5. And four, I've got 2.75 divided by 4.5. And if you list out all four options, it just makes it a little bit easier and we don't have to remember anything. So let's see which one's the right one. 2.85 divided by 5.5, which is 0 0.5182 recurring. 2.85 divided by 4.5 0.63 reoccurring 2.75 divided by 5.5 0 0.5 2.75 divided by 4.5 0 0.61 reoccurring Now your upper bound is which one's the biggest number here and it's actually going to be this one here So 6.3 recurring is the largest one. This is, so my answer is 0 0.63 recurring um, hours. But these aren't, we don't want in hours. The question says in minutes. So I'm going to have to times this by 60. Now the thing to be wary of, don't type in 0 0.63 times 60. Because that gives you this number. That's not 0 0.63. It's 0 0.63 recurring. And the easiest way is just to put loads of freezing. Times that by 60. 
Thank you. Your answer is 38 minutes. Right, there are 30 tennis players in the tennis club. Two players have to be selected at random to play a tennis match. How many different combinations could be selected? Now, if you think of it, first of all, I've got 30 players to choose from. And then after that 30 players, I've got 29 possible ones to choose from. So I'll do 30 times 29, which equals 870. But this 870 is all possible ones. So let's say I had like Bill and John, who are two different players. This 830 also includes John and Bill. Now essentially these are the same thing. So what we then have to do is we have to halve it because these two double up. I'm going to have to divide that by two. And the answer is 435 uh, possible combinations. Uh, R and T are pointing on a circle as uh, zero. R, O, P is on a straight line. P, T is a tangent to the circle. Uh, angle T, P, O is 46. Explain why angle O, T, P is 90. So explain why is this one here 90? And then you've got to say that, um, O, T, P is 90 as it is a tangent. To the radius. Next question is work out the value for y. Now this isn't really the hardest uh, circle theorem question that goes around. Uh, this is a triangle. That's 90, that's 46. We know they have to add up to 180. So I have to do 180, take away 90, take away 46. Which equals 44. So I know that um, T O P equals 44 as angles in oh, sorry, a triangle add up to 180 degrees. So if I know this is 44, I know this one here. Uh, this is on a straight line, so it equals 180. So 180 take away 44 equals 136. So R O T equals 136 degrees as R O P is a line, straight line. And now, if you think RO is the radius and OT is the radius, so this, these are actually uh, isosceles triangle. Okay. So if I know that this is an isosceles triangle, I know that those two are going to be the same. So that's to 180 degrees, take away 136, all of that is divided by 2. 180 degrees, take away 136, equals divided by 2. So it equals 22. So Y equals 22 as the base of isosceles triangles equal. Use algebra to show that the reoccurring decimal 0.38 reoccurring is 7 over 18. Now 0 0.38 reoccurring, it's not 0 0.383838. That's not what it was. This would be 0 0.38, and your recurrent would be like that. What this really is, is 0 0.38888, all the way off to infinity. So, all I do is I call 0 0.38 equals x. That's how we always start off. Now, you want to decide whether you want to times by 10, or times by 100, or times by 1,000. And uh, it's really to get rid of these 8s. Now, I want to times by 10. Okay, so I've got 10x. So, if I times this by 10, I get 3.8 recurring. Okay. So I have these two. Now I'm just going to re rewrite 3.8 recurring equals 10x and 0 0.38 recurring equals x. Now what I want to do is I'm going to subtract the top one from the bottom one. So because this is 0.38 recurring, this 8 goes on forever. So it's really like an 8 here. So when you subtract it, I've really got 8 recurring, take away 8 recurring. So all of these 8s disappear. It's going to be nothing. Then 8 minus 3 is, is 5. 3 minus 0 is 3. 
uh, 10x minus 1x is 9x. Okay, this is just a nice linear equation we can solve. So I'll divide this by 9, I've got to divide that by 9. So I've got 3.5 over 9 equals x. Okay. Now, what I hate about this is that it's got a decimal on the top, so we'll make it an equivalent fraction uh, without a decimal. So I'm times the top and the bottom by 10. 35 over 90. Okay, which equals x. Now, we've just got to simplify this. Now, I'm actually going to use my calculator to simplify this to make sure I'm on the right. So 35 over 90. If I press equals, my calculator says it's 7 over 18. This is 7 over 18. So this is 7 over 18. If you want to make it clear to the examiner, write down what you have to divide it by. So I'm actually going to do 35 divided by 7. So I'm going to have to divide this by 5. And it makes sense, it's 90 divided by 5. There's your proof. L and M are two mathematically similar prisms. So essentially it means that they're enlargements of each other. Right. Prism L has a height of 8. Prism M has a length of 20. Prism L has a height of 3. Work out the height of prism M. So I'll just draw them here just so I can explain it. So we need to work out the scale factor from L to M. So we need to think about it as 8 times what is 20. Now the actual scale factor is actually going to be 20 over 8. Now if I type into my calculator just see if that cancels down. Don't need to. But. Okay, which equals 5 halves. And that's what will make sense because 5 halves is above 1 and that's going above it. Let's just check. 5 times 5 halves equals 20. Good. But I actually need the height of n. The height here is 3. So I need to do 3 times 5 halves and see what the answer is and that will make my, give me my height. 3 times 5 over 2, so uh, equals 15 over 2, under STD, 7.5 centimetres. Um, I could actually write 15 over 2 centimetres, as they're both exactly the same answer. So my height is either 15 over 2 centimetres or 7.5 centimetres. Second part, prison M has a volume of 1,875 centimetres cubed. What is the volume of prison L? So we're saying this one here, is 1875 centimetres cubed. Now we, we know the scale factor from there to there is 5 halves. Now if it was talking to me the cross section, my scale factor would be 5 squared over 2 squared. Okay. But now we're talking about volume, so my volume scale factor is going to be 5 cubed over 2 cubed. Because okay. we've got a cube because we're dealing with um, a cube, how many cubes I can fit in there. So we'd normally times that to go from L to M. It's asking me to go from M to L, so I won't be times in it, I'll be dividing it. So my actual sum is going to be 1875 divided by 5 cubed over 2 cubed. And uh, I can make this out to be, whatever that is, 8, and make that to be oh, 125. Let's just let the calculator do all the hard work because I have a calculator. Uh, divided by 5 uh, cubed did properly, so I'm going to do it, over 2 cubed, and the answer is 120, 120 centimetres cubed, and let's see, does that make sense, well this is definitely smaller than that, and yeah, that's right. So that x squared plus 3x equals 5, can be rearranged to give x equals 5 over x plus 3. Now I've got an x here, so I want to get x on its own here by factorising x out of both of these, which I can do. Uh, x plus 3 equals 5. Uh, now I'm times by this, so I can actually divide this by x plus 3. I can divide that by x plus 3. My x plus 3 is cancelled out. So I'm now left with x equals 5 over x plus 3. Hope it's all good. I'll scroll down to get part B. Right. Use iteration formula of x plus 1 equals x over 5 over 3. Sorry, to find a solution for the equation x squared plus 5 plus 3x equals 5 to 1 decimal place. Now, it says x0 is 1. So my first term is going to be 1. Now, this is where you need to use your calculator, and you've got to use your calculator properly to do this. I'm going to do 1 and do equals. My calculator has now saved 1 as the answer. So I'm going to type this equation in, but wherever there's an x, I'm going to put equals now. So I'm going to do 5 all over answer plus 3. Now if I press equals I get 5 quarters and I'm going to write 5 quarters down 
just because there's no real actual way to lay this out. If I press equals again, it's going to do the answer again. So I'm actually going to write 20 over 17 equals again. 85 over 71 equals again. 355 over 298 equals again. 490249. Now I'm going to stop writing them because at this stage you've told the examiner you know how to do iteration and you know how to do it. So I'm actually just going to keep pressing equals like 100 loads of times. <laughs> just to be sure. And uh, if I keep, you can see that numbers tend to be the same now. Okay, the last digit change, but the question's only asking me for one decimal place. So my answer is actually 1.19 to one decimal place is 1.2. And if you substitute it back into your original equation, you, should, you might not actually get 5, but you might get something similar to that. So let's see if we can do that. So we've got 1.2 squared plus 3 times 1.2. So equals 5.04, which is close enough for the uh, question. 5 minus the square root of 8 times 7 plus the square root of 2. We have to prove it equals 31 minus 9 square root of 2. Right, just going to expand it like I normally would do. 5 times 7 is 35. 5 times square root of 2 is 5 square root of 2. Then we'll move on to my squ minus square root of 8. Minus square root of 8 times 7 is minus 7 square root of 8. Minus square root of 8 times 2 is minus the square root of 16. Now all I have to do is just tidy this up. I know the square root of 16 is 4. Okay. 5 square root of 2, so bring everything else down. Uh, 35 and 4 I can put together to make 31. Okay. So there should be a square root there. Uh, 5 square root of 2 minus 7 square root of 8. Now I've got 31 there. Natural question is asking me to prove that this bit equals 31. So now I've just got to deal with the last bit. Now I've got my square root 2, so I need to put this in terms of square root 2. So I'm going to write it as minus 7 times the square root of 4 times the square root of 2. Because 4 times 2 is 8. We know the square root of 4 is 2. So I've really got minus 7 times 2 times the square root of 2, which is minus 14 square root of 2. Okay? So these two are identical. I want to bring everything else down. 31 plus 5 square root of 2. Now I've got two square root twos. I can put these together to make five, no, sorry, to make 31 plus now five. So minus 14 plus five actually gives me minus nine square root two. And that's what the question asks me. 31, nine, minus square root two. Given that C is a prime number, rationalize the denominator of three C minus C over square root C. Simplify your answer. Now this might throw you by saying given C is a prime number, I know it sounds a bit weird, I'm just going to ignore that fact because I don't really care about it. All I'm going to do is rationalise the denominator. And the way I rationalise the denominator is by times in the bottom by the square root of c and the top by the square root of c. Okay. Um, now, I always like to think about a square root of c, 3c minus square root of c, because then I don't do anything stupid. And the bottom is square root of c times square root of c, which is c. Uh, now, this is rationalised. But it does say simplify your answer, so let's see what happens from the numerator, see if something smart happens. Um, 3c times the square root of c is actually 3c square root of c, and square root of c times square root of c is c. All of this is over c, because it's there. Now something nice happens here. Right, so this c and those two c's will cancel out. Well, let me tell you the one. I can actually factorise c out of this. So I've got C, brackets, 3 square root C minus 1. All of this over C. These two now cancel out, which will leave me with 3 square root C minus 1. And that's my answer. Question 18. F of X is 2X squared plus 1. G of X is 2X over X minus 1. Uh, we have to do G F of X. Now, you all think this is like G, but every time there's an X, we need to put the F of X. So it's uh, going to be g, so I'm going to put 2. There's an x, so I'm going to have to put the f of x over... Oh, there's another x there, so I'm going to have to put the f of x again. Uh, minus 1. Okay. Uh, g, f of x. So now we, all we've got to do is just simplify this, make it see what cancels down, see if anything cancels down. Okay. Now you might think that's 2x squared plus 1, and this is 2x squared plus 1, that we can... Counter them out straight away. 
we can't because it's minus one, so it like messes itself up a little bit. So let's expand all the brackets. Uh, 4x squared plus 2 all over, and uh, this is 2x squared plus 1 minus 1, which is actually just 2x squared. Now think about, can we factorise anything else? Can we count it down? Well, I've got 2 at the bottom and a 2 at the top, a 2 at the top. So I can get 2 out to make it 2x squared plus 1 over x squared. If you want to think of it another way, if I get back to that one, there's 2 brackets, 2x squared plus 1 over 2x squared. I've just cancelled out my 2, cancelled out my 2 to get to this stage. Um, I can't cancel those 2x down. I can't do anything else with that at all. The only thing I could do, I could split up those 2x squared over x squared plus 1 over x squared. Now you don't have to do this because it's an acceptable answer. And then my 2x squareds actually cancel out here. So I'm left with 2 plus 1 over x squared. But either answer should be fine. Okay, now there is a second part to this question. Uh, g of x again, 2x over x minus 1. We need to find the g of minus 1. So it's the opposite way around. So what I like to think about it is if I do y equals 2x over x minus 1, just written in normal form. Now you've got to swap your x's and your y's around. So x equals 2y over y minus 1. And now we need to make y the subject of this formula. So I hate fractions, so let's get rid of them. So I've got y minus 1 x equals 2y. Okay, uh, let's expand the bracket. Let's see. So let's see what happens. Uh, y x minus x equals 2y. Uh, let's get my y's on one side, so minus y x minus y x, which leaves me with minus x equals 2y minus y x. I can factorise my right hand side. I can actually take y out. y bracket uh, 2 minus x. Okay. Now I can divide by 2 minus x. I can divide by 2 minus x. Okay. Please cancel out. So I'm left with minus x over 2 minus x equals y. So this is my inverse function of g. Uh, this is a fine answer. Uh, but it might be worth noting that I can actually um, times the top and the bottom by minus 1. Which would give me x over minus 2 plus x equals y. Or x over x minus 2. Uh, both answers are acceptable, it's just generally we like to have a positive x on top. Okay, the question uh, 3 over x plus 2 plus 4 over x minus 3 equals 2. Uh, I'm going to do this step by step, there might be a few more stages than what you're used to, but it has to happen. Right, uh, adding fractions, same as if these didn't have any algebraic terms, I need to make the denominator the same. So I'm going to times this one, the top and the bottom by x plus 3, and this one here I'm going to times the top and the bottom by x plus 2. Then what I'm left with is 3 brackets x plus 3 over x plus 2 x minus 3 plus 4 brackets x plus 2 and it's going to be x plus 2 x plus 3 equals 2. Now my denominators are the same, I can just add the tops. I'm, I'm going to expand them and add the tops. So this becomes 3x plus 9 and this becomes 4x um, sorry, plus 8. This is actually minus 9 because that should be a minus. Uh, my denominator is just x plus 2, x minus 3 uh, equals 2. Uh, so then what I'm going to do is I hate fractions, so it's always good to times by the denominator. So I'm going to times both sides by x plus 2, x minus 3. And times that by x plus 2, x minus 3. Okay, so this side here, I'm going to put my, actually it's going to be 3x minus 9 plus 4x plus 8 equals 2 brackets x plus 2, x plus, sorry, x minus 3. Now on my left hand side, I'm going to put my terms together, 3 plus 4, so 4, 5, 6, 7, 7x uh, minus 9 plus 8 is minus 1. Uh, I'm going to expand my first, first bracket here, just to be 2x plus 4. Uh, x minus 3. Okay. Now nothing, nothing good is really going to come, nothing nice is happening. So I'm going to expand my second br brackets now. Uh, 2x times x is 2x squared. 2x minus 3 is minus 6x. Move on to the 4. 4 times x is 4x. 4 times 3 is minus 12. Okay. Uh, I'm going to get my numbers all on one side because I need this to equal to 0. So the only way I can solve these. 
So I'm on minus seven and plus one from this side, which means we have to minus seven x and plus one from that side. This becomes zero. Uh, I've got two x squared. Now I'm doing minus six, minus seven and plus four. Okay, so minus six plus four is minus two. Minus two minus seven is minus nine x. Minus 12 plus one is minus 11. Now I have to is I have to solve this. Now it doesn't matter how you solve this. You can see if these can be factorized. I'm not too sure whether it can be. Or we can use a formula or we can use a completing the square. I'm gonna use a formula because I just like the formula. So the formula is minus b plus or minus uh, square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Um, a is 2, b is negative 9, and c is negative 11. Oh, I'm going to move around so you can see it. Right, so I've got minus, minus 9, plus or minus the square root of minus 9 squared minus 4 times 2 times minus 11. All of this over two brackets, uh, 2. Uh, the reason why I put everything in brackets is because sometimes the calculator will mess up. Um, if it doesn't see the brackets, and I can type this in exactly how it looks. So I've got minus, uh, minus 9, I'm doing a plus first, plus the square root of minus 9 squared minus 4 times 2 times negative 11. And it's really important that you put this in exactly how it looks, uh, 2 times 2 because mistakes are easy to happen. So this is one in a plus. I've got a mass error, which means I did something wrong. It's because I didn't put a bracket there. Which again, establishes why it's good to do that. Uh, if it's a positive value, it's 11 over two. Now for a negative value, I'm just gonna go along. And where this is a plus, I'm gonna change it to a minus. Delete minus. And I get minus one. So x is either 11 halves or negative 1. Now if you want to check, we can substitute back into the question. So I'm just going to substitute minus 1 into this question here, just to see if it works. So I've got, I'll just type on exactly how it is actually. So I've got 3 over minus 1 plus 2, plus 4 over minus 1 minus 3. And hopefully that equals 2, which it does. Perfect.